Hello and welcome to episode 85 of the Mo Money Podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Morehouse. Thanks for joining me for this lovely Wednesday episode. I'm really excited about this particular episode because it's very different than any other episode I've done. Uh, we talk about a lot of different things, including uh, getting into debt through a, an addiction to gambling, which I definitely knew I needed to uh, explore because this is something that a lot of people you know, experience and probably would appreciate hearing someone talk about it who got himself out of that situation and now is a personal finance coach. So uh, I am interviewing for this episode, Bo Humphreys. Uh, you can find him at investwisely.ca. He's a personal finance coach, as I mentioned, and the nicest guy. I actually met him. Uh, the reason he's on the show is I met him at a event uh, Well Simple was throwing several months ago, and he actually knew who I was, which I still kind of get weirded out by. So that was like the coolest thing. He's like, hey, you're Jessica. I'm like, oh, dude we know each other? And no, we did not. But he was familiar with my blog and podcast and we got to chatting. He was telling me his story. I'm like, I need you on the show. This is amazing. This is really valuable information. So uh, I'm really excited to share this episode with you. And of course, before we get to that interview, I want to thank well Simple for sponsoring this episode, which makes sense since I met Bo at a Well Simple event and he actually name drops Well Simple without any encouragement from me in this episode because he's a big fan of Well Simple. So uh, in case you're not aware, Well Simple is the fastest growing automated investing service in Canada. They use smart technology to help you create and manage a diversified investment portfolio, saving you time and money. In short, basically, it is a very easy way for you to go online. You don't really have to deal with a person, go to an office or anything like that, and start investing right away. It is very simple, hence well simple. It is very easy to understand, and you will be paying less fees because that is the uh, structure that they have created. So make sure to go to wellsimple.com slash Jessica Morehouse to get your $50 bonus, hello, um, and start getting your investments right this year. Thanks, Bo, for joining me on the show. I'm excited. I'm so glad I, I met you in person and uh, I'm now chatting with you on my podcast. Yeah, it's uh, it's really um, – thanks for the invite. It's really good to be here. You are welcome. I love, uh, you know, if for people listening that don't know, me and Bo met at – a uh, gathering, uh, and it was kind of funny because you went up to me, and I think you recognized me, which I felt very flattered by. But then it was <laughs> yeah. cool to find, you know, meet another Toronto personal finance uh, guy that I hadn't met before because I kind of thought I knew most of the Toronto cats. So that's always well. I'm nice. pretty, I'm pretty new. So well, that, yeah. Um, so it was, it was yeah. meant to be, I guess. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> It's nice. It's good to go out. Uh, I, I like that there's a lot of networking type events. Uh, uh, you know, I'm sad to be uh, uh, missing uh, the uh, Canadian Personal Finance mm -hmm. Conference myself. But, uh, you know, well, I get it to happens go, every year. Uh, so don't get to go worry. To, uh, to Kenya. So that's nice. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah that's freaking cool. Um, so before we get into that, cause I, I'll probably want to talk to you. I, I looked on your website and kind of, you know, you're very all about kind of financial freedom and taking ownership of your money so you can live the life that you want. And there was a lovely photo of you in Scotland saying like, yes, this is actually me in Scotland. And I'm so jealous because that's one of the places I really, <laughs> really want to go to. Now you're going to Kenya, which sounds awesome. So I guess that's those are kind of some of the benefits, I guess, once you kind of really take control of your money situation. But it seems like from your story, and you kind of told me a little bit about it earlier, it wasn't always <laughs> so, you know, you know, trips to Kenya. <laughs> no, the, uh, you know, the, that was my honeymoon in Scotland, actually, oh, which lovely. is great. We did Italy and Scotland and, and, uh, you know, I've been to, to Peru and Costa Rica and Japan, uh, uh and Indonesia, uh, since then. Wow. Um, so the travel, but I only started traveling when I was, you know, about 31, 30, 31. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's because I did pay money. Uh, and also I was, uh, um, I was pretty much terrified of everything, um, because, uh, I had attention deficit disorder, mm -hmm. uh, which goes all the way back to the reason why I started gambling. Mm -hmm. So when did yeah. you start gambling and what kind of gambling did you do? How did you well, fall into that? It's sort of, it's a, it was a 20 year struggle for me, believe it or not. I'm 36. Wow. <laughs> So between the age, uh, it goes back to uh, the age of 11. Wow. Uh, that's how early I started. And, uh, um, you know, uh, it was a, 
I had a problem incident at the time. Uh, I'll tell you about that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's hard to really be a problem gambler until you're 18 years old. Um, but I got the taste for it early. So, uh, you know, basically uh, the way that I look at addiction, I've been through a lot of addiction counseling mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the, you know, uh, I ended it about five years ago uh, when I, you know, quote unquote, uh, cured mm -hmm. uh, which nobody's ever really cured but uh mm -hmm. there is the time where you get uh, i will tell people you will have your last relapse and you will know mm -hmm. that you're done with your addiction um but basically um you know i i spent a lot of time um sort of building it up as my as my thing and the thing about addiction is it's really just um the coping mechanism for whatever is really uh, bothering you in your life mm -hmm. right so I chose gambling because when I started young and I liked it and I liked money, mm -hmm. um, but it could have been, you know, cocaine or alcohol or whatever, smoking even. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, I picked the one that uh, depleted my finances mm -hmm. um, more so than a lot of the other ones would. Right. Yeah. How did you get involved so young? Like what? Like so. Yeah, that's a good. That's a really good question. And <laughs> it probably it probably wouldn't be very easy um, now for an eleven year old to really get a good taste, except maybe if they sort of faked it out online. Yeah. Uh, but then they would never be able to collect their winnings, so it's kind of a, it would be kind of a moot experience for them. They could probably blow a bunch of money, but they'd never get a chance to win it mm -hmm. uh, back because it would have to go to their parents or something. There, nobody would ever send an eleven year old something. But when, so in 1991. I was saving up um, my Christmas and birthday money to buy a Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. right? The Super Nintendo was the big thing, but it wasn't available in Canada until 1992. Mm -hmm. So I could order it from the States. Saved up all my money and I said, but I couldn't do it myself. I couldn't order it. I had to ask my parents. I said, I want to buy a Super Nintendo. Look, I have all this money. Here's the order form and stuff. And they said, ah, that's a lot of money to spend on the thing that you really want more than anything else in the world. <laughs> um, you let's no, you can't do that. You know, hold on to your money and we'll talk about it later or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this was my first um, time probably in my life that I did that. I was, really didn't get everything that I wanted. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of those like I'm this really spoiled kid rebellion uh, thing. And um so what I decided to do in secret was uh, take my Super Nintendo money and go to the mall with some of my 10, 11 year old friends and uh, go buy lottery tickets. And at that time, uh, they didn't really care much if you said you're buying it for your parent or oh. an older brother. The, the legislation was in place, but it wasn't really enforced as it would be today. Mm -hmm. And definitely there was no one uh, in the government actively enforcing it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to go buy about $300 worth of lottery over a week. Mm -hmm. And so that basically gave me the taste um, and also the first taste of, of uh, disappointing my parents when they came in and uh, saw and said, okay, so where's that money? Uh, maybe we'll buy that Nintendo now. And I said, it's all gone. Oh. Right? So For I'm an 11 year assuming you didn't make anything from those lottery tickets. Oh, no, it was just fun. Like maybe we one of them was a $50 winner and everyone got excited. But it was really more of the the thrill. And and like, like I said earlier, that I'm coping with something that I don't know how to handle at this time in my life, mm -hmm. which is an uncomfortable situation, a disappointment. Right. And yeah. a lot of people go through these things in their life and they don't know how to deal with life because either they, they don't have it innately in, in them to learn or uh, they just the, the inability to cope is a huge thing in terms of mental illness. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that was just the first incident. And, and obviously then between then and the age of 18, probably all of my pocket money on lottery tickets whenever I could. But then they got picked. Um, the next big thing was when I turned 18. Mm -hmm. um, and, I'd, and I went to university and I had a credit card and also an emergency credit card me by my parents and so basically that's the beginning of the real uh struggle that i had 10 years mm -hmm. and uh so what happened was i get to university and i somewhere along the way i'm gonna be the gambler i'm gonna be the guy in residence who gambles right and 
because uh, it was impressive to people, right? Mm -hmm. I would I would gamble online and then say, oh, I just won like twenty five hundred dollars, and people wouldn't believe me until the check came in the mail and I showed them, and they're like, oh wow, right? Yeah. But little do they know that I also lost that twenty five hundred dollars like five minutes later. Yeah online and the check is just coming in to come in and pay for the thing that I already gambled away. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, why am I gambling so much? Uh, you know, it's because I'm, I'm not like I, you know, the, the answer to all of this is, um, uh, really I had attention deficit disorder and I didn't know it. Right. Um, and the, the best way to describe attention deficit disorder for a lot of people, um, other than the hyperactivity part, which I didn't have is, is you're really, you just have, uh, you're really terrified of everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you try to do something, it takes so long or you can't focus or you don't know how to finish it. And so you, you never want to start anything. Um, and so that's really hard to deal with. Yeah. And so what I did was uh, I, I gambled to cope, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, my parents found out, obviously, I gambled away the, uh, emergency fund, um, mm -hmm. the emergency credit card money. So I had to tell them. And so they decided, uh, you know, okay, well, you know, we'll pay it off, but you got to go to counseling and, uh, you know, uh, mental health counseling, especially addiction counseling, not, not very, uh, not a lot going on, uh, uh in the late nineties, yeah. uh, at, you know, on Western, uh, campus. So, you know, they just thought I was depressed or something and, and it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of help going on, but, uh, so basically, it was just a series of, um, you know, little relapses here and there, uh, you know, stopgap measures, which uh, I'll talk about, like, oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to give my credit cards to my my brother, yeah. right? He'll look after my credit cards or stop them or whatever. Mm -hmm. you, we can't cancel them because they're all loaded up with uh, balance. But mm -hmm. once I graduated university and I was on my own, everyone started offering me all this credit. And uh, for uh, credit for a gambler is the worst, oh, yeah. right? Um, so, uh, at one point I had about five, uh, probably five to eight credit cards, depending, mm -hmm. um, on, which is a lot and it wasn't for the points. Yeah. It was cause sometimes I would get an offer to consolidate at a lower rate for six months. And at least I knew at that time that it would save me, um, some, you know, interest payments. Um, but you know, as I, as the years went on, I realized this is something that is not going to fix itself. I'm going to counseling at Cam H now. I'm living in Toronto, and and uh, um, but it, nothing is changing. I'm I'm sort of learning more about what's happening. But you know, when is this going to stop? Right? Why why do I have these relapses every so often? And um, so it kind of came to a head where I was in a, a job I didn't like so much in 2005, and I decided to go and celebrate my 25th birthday by taking a very small cruise from Vancouver down to uh, San Francisco, repositioning mm -hmm. crews, mm -hmm. uh, one day, right? Yeah. And uh, the thing about the cruise is that it had a casino on it. Uh-oh. And I'm all by myself, and I'm in another part of the world, and I don't, I, this is my, kind of my first time traveling, really, because mm -hmm. I was so afraid, and I'm, and, you know, I'm still so afraid of everything, still not medicated for the ADD, I don't know that I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I basically blew whatever cash that I had, um, at the casino. And then the rest of my vacation was just, I, I remember walking around San Francisco looking for a casino. Like wow. that's, that's how bad it yeah. was. And then immediately when I got back to Toronto, I went and I bought however many hundreds of dollars of lottery tickets that I could mm -hmm. just to try to continue whatever, you know, uh, coping like this. Uh, it, it's kind of like you're, you're, you're living in a cloud, mm -hmm. right? And you like the cloud so much. Yeah. And and so you just want to stay in it. And so basically, at the same time that I was applying for a job that I ended up having for six years at Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment um, uh, in the, in the mm -hmm. live entertainment department, I went through the interview process. I got the job, but I was gambling the whole time at night, like pretty much constantly. Mm -hmm. And at one point, I won $20,000 in a period of a half an hour. Oh, wow. And then at that point is when I realized there's no way that I'm going to hold on to this. Yeah. Whatever is making me do this is also making me realize 
that this isn't for me to make the money back that I lost because that means that it would have to stop. It would have to end, exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. There's, so the ending, uh, I realized I couldn't do it. Um, so all of that 20000 went away and I had to um, go and start a job on a Monday mm-hmm. and I had no money in my bank account for rent. Wow. So I had to call a really close friend of mine who was aware of my past gambling problems, thought I had it all in check, but relapses or relapses, they happen. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was so upset, but I told him that he could have full access to my, uh, credit card statements and my bank statements, um, to make sure that I, you know, I mean, it was such a terrible burden to put on him and and he might be listening to this and (laughs) he'll probably agree. Um, that it was, mm-hmm. but it, it's, it's these stopgap, uh, measures that are important. They're not going to fix your problem, but they at least help you and give you a little more time to figure out whatever you need to figure out to get there. You have to get there on your own. That's yeah. the downside to addiction is you have to figure it out on your own. No one can tell you. I'd love to tell however many people I meet and that I met when I was, when I was finishing up in the, the, the gambling recovery groups, I would meet people of all stages. I wanted to tell them, this is how you do it. Yeah. This is how you fix this. But mm-hmm. I, all I could do was tell them that it was going to get better and that if they work on this one thing, that'll help them move on. But you, you can't fix people. And so he lent me the money to pay my rent. And uh, um, you know, I'd like to say that was the last time. It was rock bottom, definitely. Mm-hmm. It was the last time I got down there. But um, basically, uh, I would say from there on, it was a bit... Uh, of an uphill, uh, climb. Uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, so, you know, it, it was, it was good that way. Uh, so the development that, that, uh, helped me the most was, um, I realized, uh, that I was $40,000 in debt at this, at this wow. point. Right. Uh, yeah, this includes, so student loans were where people would have been paying them off. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, I didn't have the money to pay them off. I was gambling with the money that I would have paid the student loans off mm-hmm. with. And, and the, one of the worst things is I got an inheritance mm-hmm. uh, from my grandparents and I made the decision to put half of it immediately on the line of credit that I couldn't um, access because I was paying it off, mm-hmm. but only half of it and I blew the rest of it. So yeah. This is like something I could have invested. Yeah, I was just in such a bad state that, you know, I couldn't. I couldn't do anything uh, in terms of improving my personal finance, mostly because I knew that it wouldn't stick, yeah. right? So it's like I had to fix whatever was going on with me before I could. Um, it's like if somebody would have given me all the money and paid off all my debts, I don't think it would have made a difference at that point. Mm-hmm. I would have just figured out a way to dig myself back in. So, I mean, one of the main lessons I want to convey to people is is, uh, you know, money problems usually have nothing to do with money, Mm -hmm. right? They're about something else in your life that you need to work on. And, you know, uh, somebody giving you a bunch of money or you making more money is not going to fix those things, right? Money can't buy happiness. Money can't fix your problems. Mm -hmm. It can make you happier if you're already happy, right? Yeah. And that's kind Um, of why you see, I feel like there's so many, you hear about the lottery winners that, you know, never had a lot of money, they win the lottery and they blow it in a year. Or I know people who, yeah, who've gotten an inheritance or, you know, some kind of windfall and they're like, oh, finally they can use this money to fix their situation and they just blow it all and they're almost worse than where they were before because money isn't the issue, like you said. It's not. And and you're absolutely right. People, you know, a windfall, you know, people always be like, oh, I'll, if I win this, it'll fix all my problems. Mm-hmm. And your problems are probably have nothing to do with the fact that you have debt, you know, you have debt because you have problems. Yep. Uh, right. I lo- yeah. I like that. <laughs> they, they, they see it, they see it in reverse, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it, it could have been, it could have been my liver instead yeah. of my bank account. Yeah. Right. Um, it could have been uh, that I, you know, that I kind of destroyed myself or got in a car accident cause I drove drunk or something. Yeah. But instead I just, blew all of the potential, uh, for growth. And this, it's, you know, I, one of the main things about, um, addiction recovery is you have to let go of regret. Yeah. But if I did have a regret, it would be that I lost tons of potential 
um, that I could have invested anything in. If I even if I would have invested regularly while I was blowing some of my other money, I wasn't in the state of mind for any of that, right? Things that I know that are so clear to me now. Um, so what happened was um, I decided, um, well, there must be some kind of relief. I couldn't pay my minimum payments and because uh, they were so high. This is $40,000 in credit card debt. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about you know a low interest uh, or a mortgage or a yeah. low interest loan. Um, so I, I researched it and I, I found that uh, you can go see a bankruptcy trustee mm-hmm. and they can help you with uh, a consumer proposal to your creditors yeah. uh, instead of bankruptcy. A bankruptcy would have been an option too. Uh, there's a lot of stigma surrounding all of this stuff, but there, it's there for basically situations that I would like mine, mm-hmm. where you have a problem and you're crippling yourself, and you see no way out, and you need some relief in order to help yourself dig, help dig yourself out of the hole that you put yourself in. Um, so it was like the extreme version of uh, giving my credit cards to my brother or, or cutting them off. I did a proposal to my creditors, and the proposal uh, was accepted, and they it cut uh, my forty thousand down to fifteen thousand. Nice. It, it was. It, I'm. I feel like I'm very lucky because I know a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't get that deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it might depend on the trustee and and the the creditors, but I got that deal, which meant uh, three hundred dollars a month over fifty months. Mm-hmm. Um, no, the, the interest stops. But now my credit rating is an uh, R9, R7, I forget the exact uh, number in the credit scale, but it means uh, inability to pay debts as they become due. Mm -hmm. And now you're branded with that, right? So if I wanted a mortgage, no way. Mm -hmm. If I wanted any kind of a loan or credit card, no no chance, especially with the companies that I defaulted on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They're not, they were not happy with me as they, uh, so... But but it was actually a, a blessing in disguise. It was probably the best thing to happen to me, because not only was I now have this do I have this manageable monthly payment, but now I have extra money that I can save because yeah. the budget that we made with the bankruptcy trustee included a budget for savings, which is very realistic and 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 kind of the government to allow. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, that was the first step that I took, and and uh, then. You know, I started investigating uh, other why, am, but why do why am I acting this way? Why? So I looked into, um, you know, I just was reading online about a whole bunch of different things, self improvement, and I stumbled across attention deficit, and I took a little mm-hmm. test online, and it said, yeah, you should get yourself checked out. Psychiatrist, you know, Cam H is great. They they helped me with my gambling addiction. Great counselor, mm-hmm. but he never thought about, about, you know, that I might have attention deficit disorder. Put me into touch with the psychiatrist, and there you go. She uh, she confirmed it with a real test. Mm-hmm. I got medicated, and it was like night and day. Really? All the things that I was, uh, yeah, it, it's it's crazy. And I've spoken to other people who've had medication for ADD, and you don't realize uh, how paralyzing the fear of the fear of doing something new, interacting with people that they may become your friends, and now you have an obligation. To spend time with friends, that's terrifying. Yeah. Because do you have the energy? Yeah. Right. It's, it's all of these things people don't know, and uh, so got I, I uh, took care of that. It, you know, it's still it's a long road. Uh, you know, in mindfulness mm-hmm. uh, therapy and, and cognitive behavior therapy, it's not just the drugs to get out of a, a you know a, a, a most of your early lifetime of having this problem, mm-hmm. but it really kind of Pushed me out of it. Obviously, um, you know, it wasn't the last uh, gambling that I did, but the the last gambling that I did do, I'll tell you that story. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no credit, so I can't gamble online, mm-hmm. right? But I decide I'm, I need a change in my life. I'm going to uh, quit my job and I'm going to go take a two year visa and go to uh, England mm-hmm. for, um, that's, that was my plan. I'm going to go to England, right? Mm-hmm. I just need to get out. I need to, to, because you have, I have this um, residual gambling addiction that I just, I feel like I'm on the edge of shaking. Yeah. And, but I'm still living the same life that I'm living. Sure, I, I, my debt is a little more manageable, but 
I'm, you know, I'm still me in this situation. I got to change it up. And I, right. you know, I'll, I was listening to one of your podcasts today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jace, Jason, Jason, uh, Vid, Vitig, 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 yeah, Vitig, yeah, yeah. I thought uh, that that was fantastic. Yeah, he's because so great. he said, you sometimes you just have to change your situation. Sometimes you just have to go away to yeah. realize important to you what what is important in life and um i didn't go to england Mm -hmm. um but what i did was uh i went to peru and but just before i left um i probably had one of the worst nights of my life i decided i'd never been to woodbine in my life Mm -hmm. i was gambling online yeah but i decided i'm gonna get on a bus and go to woodbine because the stress of me leaving my job of six years i'm about to leave the country i don't have any plans apparently was still too much for my fragile uh, you know, attention deficit remainder to handle. Mm-hmm. What's wood, and, and what is Woodbine? Sorry. <laughs> wood, Woodbine is a, and it has slots. Oh, sorry. Can you say and, that one more time? It just cut out. Sir, it's a racetrack, uh, a Woodbine racetrack mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for horse racing, right? But it's it also has slot machines. Ah, weird. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which, which is an Ontario, if you don't know much about gambling, Ontario uh, put the slot machines in all of the uh, racetracks. Oh, really? Back. Yeah, yeah. They wanted to encourage more people to come. Of and and all gamble, it, of All course. it did was make more gamblers. Yeah. Um, and and I, I do want to say I have no problem with responsible gambling. I can't do it. You know, if you want to go and gamble with my extra money that you have, that's that's it could be an entertaining thing, right? Mm-hmm. I don't want to say that I'm totally anti gambling because it's just like anything else. Go have a drink, you know, go gamble for a little bit, whatever. In modern, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you're not an addict, right? Um, but I went there and I just blew through my cash. I just started, you know, only the ATM stopped me with the limits for the day, and I ended up end of the night. Um, Three in the morning, four in the morning, in the middle of nowhere, because I don't know even know how I got to Woodbine. And I'm sitting there at a bus stop with my Metro card. That's all I had, hoping that the bus comes. Mm-hmm. And part of me knew that that was the last time that, that I just need to get out of this country yeah. for a little bit. Um, so I went to Peru and I went there for 30 days. And, uh, and I wrote a blog. I have a whole blog about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, I spent 10 days in the jungle wow. and uh, in the jungle with, you know, <laughs> things that are going to kill you <laughs> around every corner, you know, we're hiking up a thing and there's like a thousand fire ants on a tree. And and there's a there's a, a, a place to go where there's lots of bees that you don't want to go. And uh, just like dangers everywhere. You could slip and fall everywhere that we're going and and. Uh, you know, the monkeys didn't bite me. I'm glad that a, a friend of mine was bit by a monkey in oh uh, Bolivia, Bolivia on, a, on a separate trip. Uh, so, so watch it. Don't put your hands near monkeys. That's the, <laughs> the conclusion there. Um, not, not ones that you don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but in the middle of the jungle, about halfway through my stay where, you know, I had to go and sleep in, in between two rivers, uh, you know, uh, in a tent. Uh, where the only place where we, the only way we could get to our campsite was like doing a little sort of horizontal zip line across the river. Mm-hmm. I'm just like sitting there thinking, um, you know, I have to accept this situation, and I'm gonna be okay, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes accepting a situation that is very difficult um, makes you realize that your life back home is not difficult at all. Mm -hmm. And that the things that you're struggling with, um, you know, they're not really um, anything to to worry about. And you should just go back and enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I kind of hit a a milestone there. And so when I got back, I just started, uh, my life just started anew. I I started um, just saying yes to things. Gambling was... You know, I, I, I went back and I, I went to the, the, the groups, the counseling groups, mm-hmm. just to kind of reinforce that I was done. And I would just go and say, hey, I'm done. I'm not gambling. Other people might say that they were and I would try to help them or yeah. that we would all help each other and listen. Right. But it was like it faded away. It was gone. And I just started accepting life. And 
I started a job where I, you know, made twenty thousand dollars more than I made this job. So now I'm able to save, and for the first time ever, you know, um, I'm starting to be able to build, um, you know, a, a, a personal financial plan for myself, which was impossible in in my old time, um, where I was just unable to not spend the money on gambling. Yeah. Um, when, when I went into my consumer proposal, I had to live on cash cause I had no credit mm-hmm. and I learned a lot about, um, managing my money and how important it is to only spend money that you have. Yeah. The best, um, way to do that is, uh, n- to not be able to spend money that you don't have. Yeah. If you are forced to monitor your spending because if you spend too much at a restaurant or in groceries, you can't pay your rent. Well, then that's, that's like, it's a, it's, it's important. Yeah. You, you have to monitor everything. And then you realize that it's fine. You don't need the things that uh, you can't afford. Yeah. You're still happy. You can still live your life. And so, um, you know, I was able to kind of start over and then I started paying more attention to things like bank fees and investment fees and where I had my uh, you know, work uh, locked in retirement account, R- R- RSP, you know, things like that started to actually um, become important to me. Mm-hmm. But I had to get through all of my uh, personal problems first. And it's really hard to manage both. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was quite the story. <laughs> so that, that's sorry. I know, I know it's a long story. No, but I, no. It, it's, I'm I glad it you tells... shared it because you really did need to know from the beginning to now to really get the full picture of what addiction looks like and how one gets out of it. I think that's the, the struggle that, you know, the main thing that's, you know, how do people, everyone has a different way of, of you know, realizing something needs to change. And sometimes it's, it means it. leaving the country for a little bit and getting some perspective on life. And, 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 um, you have to be unafraid of changing your life completely. Yes. That's what I find a lot of people struggle with. I want to, um, quit smoking, but I always smoke when I drink, uh, mm-hmm. and I don't want to quit drinking. Well, maybe you need to quit drinking. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's a, it's, it sounds really obvious and logical, yeah. but people are unwilling to go that step because they're, that's their life. Mm-hmm to give up their life yeah and my life for most of my life revolved around some kind of gambling and I couldn't imagine a life without it Mm -hmm. and I had to get away to realize that I didn't need it at all and there was never going to be any positive benefit from it yeah no and that must be hard especially when you've had that in your life for 20 years how do you yeah you know just start living your life you know yeah, that's it's been, you know, a routine of yours for so long. That's a hard routine to break. For sure. It is. For sure. But you know, what comes out of it is some really good stuff. And you know, also what it is is the desire to help. Mm-hmm. So, during all this whole time, I'm working um as a finance manager or an accountant, uh, depending on where, I, you know, uh, for the music business most mm-hmm. of the time. And I'm managing and organizing people's finance they just happen to be companies. Um, and I'm like, well, now I'm doing it for myself. And I use, you know, my skills to help people. Um, so just last year, I decided, uh, you know, well, why don't I get something a little more? So I, I decided to get the retirement consultant designation from the Canadian Institute of Financial Planning, mm-hmm. which gave me a little bit more knowledge, you know, um, the interaction that the CPP and OAS have when you retire uh, with your existing retirement funds and how to basically make a comprehensive uh, financial plan. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I use those guidelines now. And um, I'm really looking forward to putting it all together, um, uh, you know, as a personal finance coach. So basically helping people with their budgeting Mm -hmm. or figuring out basically how much money they make, how much money they spend and what it's left over. Mm -hmm. Right. Which a lot of people don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I mean, you, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. It surprises me still that people don't necessarily know. spend. they might know if they don't have any money left in the bank. 
Um, but credit cards make it even worse because they might not even be able to track those if they leave a balance. Mm -hmm. So the first part is tracking spending. And, and uh, you know, I plan to use, if unless they have a really good tool for themselves, things like Mint. Mm -hmm. Mint.com is great. Um, great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It does the job. And uh, then just, you know, kind of making sure uh, people, you know, it's like the financial planning process is about, um, understanding what money means to you, yeah. right? Why are you saving? I wrote a blog about, uh, it was called, why are you saving money? Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of people don't know. They just say, Oh, I'm saving for the future. Well, what do you want to do? What do you want to do in the future? Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, if it's a future like near future, then maybe you shouldn't put it in an RSP where you, you're going to have to take a penalty to take it out, uh, when you need it next year to go on vacation. Right. Yep. It's like, you know, these kinds of conversations need to happen a lot. If someone just says max out your RSPs or put something in here without understanding, I think that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And and what I would like to do is clarify all this stuff for people in a really sort of simple way in English that is not involving you know financial jargon. Um, and I want I want to go through it with people until I feel like they understand. Exactly. And then and then just keep it simple. Yep. Put in a really simple thing, right? Mm -hmm, uh, you know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because your uh, kind of strategy, which I, I like, it's very, you know, focused on keeping it simple. And it's, you know, you meet up or you, you are, you know, connected to um, someone who wants your services. You make a plan with them and then you're like, go off and do, and then we will meet up again in another year. Why, why do you do that? And why, why have you found that to be successful? Well, the, the thing is, people are terrified, you know, it's like I was terrified of everything. People are terrified of their personal finances, right? Yeah. So the when somebody says, oh, I'm going to meet with a financial planner, they don't like that. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do that. The, the people that I'm reaching out to are people who just want a simple solution. Yeah. They don't care about investing in a perfect portfolio of stocks and bonds for themselves. They don't care about, um, you know, um, when I'm 63 years old, I think I'm going to make a thousand dollars more. So let's plot that in to the spreadsheet, yeah. right? They just want to know that what they're doing is they're going to be okay, right? Based on what they think they might be doing in the future. And so I think there is a, there's room for the really simple, um, and then they don't look at the news. They don't look at the Global and Mail yeah. uh, financial you know, investor section every day. They don't look at it ever. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, basically the plan is to partner with uh, Wealth Simple for the investment advising uh, part of this because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not I don't want to sell you investments. I, I don't you know, based on my history, you probably don't want me to hold your money. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's get let's give it to some. I can give you some advice. But let's give it to somebody else who is like insured by the Canadian Inve Investment Protection Fund, mm -hmm. right, for a million dollars per account. Let's let them hold on to your money. And what we'll do is we'll just talk about the best thing that's for you. And I'll try to help you understand what this plan is all about that we're going through, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, uh, the thing about companies like Wealthsimple is you, you pay them very little um, in terms of percentage. Mm -hmm. And they do everything. They do all the investment things for you. Um, and you don't have to look at it. You know, I was at an event, uh, last week, um, uh, about financial literacy. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions was with these robo advisors, like, well, simple, how many times do I have to check up on, on my account? Mm -hmm. How many times do I have to look at it? And, you know, sponsored by Tangerine and Tangerine guy said, well, the idea is you don't. Yeah. Right. And this is a completely ideal thing for me because, you know, I'm, I'm going to charge very little to my clients because we're not going to really be spending a lot of time every year going through this. Now, you got to review it every year. It's important. If, you're, if your life situation changes, let's, let's go and rejig the plan a little bit. If you're making less or making more, obviously, you can't be saving. you got to make some changes. But usually in one year, nothing changes. Yeah. Nothing changes that you have to worry about especially if you're invested in something that's balanced, yeah. right? And it's being rebalanced by a company like Wealthsimple or if you invest in Tangerine Balance Funds or any other, you know, company that's going to do it for you, um, enable you to set it and forget it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's not about really forgetting. It's about not having to worry. 
And I think that's the key. I want, I want uh, you know, my clients to be able to sit on their couch. And if uh, something comes on the TV like Brexit or, mm -hmm. you know, an election uh, <laughs> result, for example, uh, they, they, they can send me an email that says, hey, do I have to worry about this? And probably my answer is going to be no. Exactly. As right? long as you don't sell everything. <laughs> that's, that's it, right? It's like, you know, if you have money invested mm -hmm. in anything that's risky, you're, you should be having it invested in for the long term. Exactly. Right? So these little blips are just blips. Mm -hmm. Brexit is a blip. Election is a blip. Mm -hmm. the, the market will recover. That's the whole idea of having balance. Yeah. And so balance in life, balance in your portfolio, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the, the whole concept here is spend very little time on finances so you can live your life. Because I figured out that life is spending time with people and doing things mm -hmm. <laughs> and not hiding away and hoping that they don't take up all your energy, right? Mm -hmm. But I live a lot of my 20s thinking. Yeah. And uh, so let's let's automate whatever we can. Let's set it. Set it and forget it. You know, simplify your finance. Um, I don't want to talk to you a lot about it. It's <laughs> like I said, I uh, say on my website, yeah. I want to go. I'm going to Kenya. I want to yeah. go to Indonesia. Yeah. I don't want you calling me every day. <laughs> and you shouldn't be, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing to be yeah, there shouldn't be anything to worry about. And I absolutely agree with you on that. Try to automate as many things as possible. Obviously, know what you're doing, but, uh, you know, the key is to know what you're doing, make smart decisions so you can go on and live your life. Understand what you need to understand mm -hmm. and have confidence in some of the, you know, uh, companies out there that have good reputations, right? Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you both for uh, spending this time chatting with me and sharing your story. I, I know a lot of listeners will get a lot out of it. I'm sure most people, I feel like, can relate to your story. Either they went through it themselves or they know someone who has. I for sure can uh, identify in uh, certain circumstances. Uh, so thank you again for joining me on the show. Thank you. And, and I mean, I you know, other than helping people with their finances, I, I hope that, you know, sharing this stuff helps people with, you know, any mental health problems that they might have or the, a family member might have and at least maybe makes them uh, understand a little more what it's like. And that was episode 85 of the Mo Money podcast with the wonderful Bo Hemphries. You can learn more about Bo and what he's all about, what he is doing um, at investwisely.ca. And of course, I will put a lot more information about him, what we talked about um, in the show notes. So make sure to go to jessicamorehouse.com slash 85 for all that good stuff. And before I go, thank you again to Wellsimple for sponsoring this episode. I really appreciate it. And if you want to take this year as the year that you get your money right, you get your investments right, well... Go to wellsimple.com slash Jessica Morehouse and get started. Not only will you get an extra, like a free $50 bonus when you sign up uh, through that link, but you don't need a ton of money to invest. I think that's a thing that lots of people think, but it's not true. You do not, to be, you do not need to be rich to start investing right away. You will be paying lower fees than if you kind of went, uh, you know, with mutual funds that usually have higher fees traditionally. And it's just super simple. You go online, you plug in all of your information, you go through, you know, uh, you know, just a couple of questions, a questionnaire to figure out what's right for you. And bada bing, bada boom, you're investing and you're getting your money right in 2017. So highly recommend and going to wellsimple.com slash Jessica Morehouse to find out everything that you need to know. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode.